Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Did you know that within the state of Pennsylvania, we have over 86,000 miles of flowing waterways throughout the state? We're second only to Alaska when it comes to those numbers. Today, we're joined by a very special guest, Dave Nyhart. Dave is the cold water unit leader for the state of Pennsylvania, and in this video, he's gonna talk about some of the characteristics that can be found with a wild trout stream in our state. Thank you, Cody. Uh, as Cody mentioned, our state has roughly 86,000 miles of flowing water. Uh, it, it, one thing that's truly special about Pennsylvania is of those 86,000 miles, roughly 17,000 miles in this state, we've documented wild trout. Um, so that's pretty unheard of uh, um, in the grand scheme of things. And, and one thing that's very important about identifying a wild trout stream is, is you want to look at not only the physical, but the chemical characteristics of a stream. And you can look at this beautiful stream that we're here in, in Clinton County, and see some of the physical characteristics that you often find in areas where you're going to find good wild brook trout streams or wild brook trout populations. You can see first overhead cover. You look above us, you have hemlocks, you have rhododendron, and you have some tulip poplar. So these are all species that provide very good over, overhead cover for wild trout. Looking at some of the physical characteristics of the stream, you can see upstream here a very nice pool. Um, and not only is this a very nice pool, you can see that it has some very good overhead cover in the way of some woody debris. Uh, overhead cover is extremely important, whether it's coming from the riparian area or physical habitat within the stream. You can see that uh, woody debris, undercut banks, all this is, is favorable habitat or habitat that's favored by wild brook trout. Also, when you're looking at a pool, one other uh, important habitat characteristic of a pool is, is depth. So water depth is also a characteristic of good overhead cover. That in combination with the woody debris and the undercut, undercut banks makes it an optimal location for wild brook trout to live. Besides um, these poles, if you would look downstream, you can see a nice ripple that leads into a run. Very important stream characteristics to have when you're trying to look for wild brook trout. It's also important that um, some of the waterways that are in our state that may have wild trout, but we're always looking for ways to improve the wild trout abundance, we typically do habitat work. And our habitat work is done, it's artificial, it's artificial structures, but it's done to mimic some of the things that you see in the wild. So as you can see with this woody debris here, we have a project uh, that we do uh, in, in concert with some other state and local agencies, where we're actually going in and creating large woody debris. And some of that work is made possible by the funding of the light of the sales of the uh, wild trout and enhanced waters permit funds that we get. We've actually purchased some equipment to allow us to actually chop and drop these trees and move them in position. So by doing that, we're creating habitat that will benefit the wild trout within the stream system. Um, and again, when you're looking for, for wild trout areas, I mean, you can see around us here, we're in a dense forest. We're in, we're in areas where uh, human activity is very minimal. Uh, so it's not not just by chance that you're finding wild trout in a stream like this, in an area like this. It has a combination of, as I mentioned before, great physical habitat, great chemical habitat. If you were to stick your hand in this water right now, you would notice that this stream is very cold um, and remains cold throughout the year. With, with wild trout and particularly brook trout, water temperature and DO is a very important characteristic um, to look for. Typically brook trout do the best in very cold water. Uh, anywhere from 50, 55, 60 degrees is optimal, optimal temperatures for brook trout. You start getting in the high 60, 65, 68, they become stressed. When water temperatures get over 70, particularly 72, 74 degrees, they become lethal to brook trout. So cold water is key, and a key to keeping water cold, as mentioned before, this beautiful riparian area that has this corridor completely protected from sunlight, and as mentioned, there's very little human activities in this watershed. So it's really a combination of everything that allows this stream to have exceptional wild brook trout population. So Dave, you mentioned that cold water has something that, that you said was DO. Can you explain a little bit what DO is? That's a great question. So DO is, is referred to, to dissolved off, oxygen is what we call DO. Uh, and it's important and it's vital to have d dissolved oxygen in the system for trout and being trout being a cold water species they require large amounts of DO so typically when you look at dissolved oxygen in levels of five to seven milligrams per liter that's a preferred temperature or preferred oxygen level for trout what happens if stream temperatures become warmer the DO drops and it becomes lethal 
Um, you get to levels where the DO is not in the system, it will become lethal to the, to the wild trout. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dave.